Hey guys, it's Annie Margarita Yang back with another video for you today. Today is Thursday, January 18, 2024. And I know I didn't record any videos in the last two days. I'm sorry. I was away in New York City. I drove to New York on Tuesday, then drove right back on Wednesday. Had to go see the dentist. My dentist is in New York. So uh, every time I have to see the dentist, I have to do a long drive just to go see him. Um, anyway, you're probably wondering why I'm dressed like this. My Amazon package just came. So I wanted to do some um, TikTok shorts, some comedy videos, and I needed some costumes. So I ordered some wigs <laughs> for the shorts that I'm going to do. They finally came, so I wanted to try them on. What do you think? Do I look like a hip grandma? Anyway, uh, tomorrow is my birthday. So I think this is very fitting that I got this wig. Maybe I can go out wearing this and ask people if I can get a senior citizen discount because I like to save money. Okay, anyway, let's get started. So today, I just wanted to respond real quick to Jason's comment on a video and then we can move on to this other topic, addressing imposter syndrome. So Jason said, not to throw shade on your accountability, buddy, but I suspect you'd be successful because you are making yourself accountable to yourself. I think Jason makes a good point. Uh, I am pretty good at having discipline and being consistent with things. So if I set my mind to practicing piano every day, I will sit down and I, I will practice every day. If I set my mind to doing anything, basically, I can just sit down and do it. Uh, one of the things that I can do, like for example, I found out I was allergic to chocolate, right? And I was allergic, I'm allergic to chocolate, beef, shrimp, corn, and a whole bunch of other foods. And once I found out that I was allergic to it because I was breaking out in hives, I just said, not eating not eating that anymore. And I just never ate those foods again, even though um, those are actually my favorite foods. So I, I have a lot of self-discipline to just go like, nope, not doing it. And then I just co I can quit cold turkey, right? So uh, he makes a good point, but I still think there's a lot of value and having an accountability buddy because when I was struggling um, with getting my first client, it was a struggle. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I did not have a lot of confidence. It was a real struggle. Um, I was very nervous and anxious, uh, cold emailing people on the internet and my accountability buddy really did make a big difference in the results that I got because she used to be a real estate agent. So she had to like knock on doors and ask people, would, would you like to sell your house? Would you like me to help you sell your house, right? And when she first started, she knocked on doors every single day and she would do like a whole round, maybe return to the same house every week or every two weeks. Have you changed your mind? Would you like to sell your house? You know, I'm always here, I'm always available. And for six months, you know, she had doors slammed in her face. A lot of people said, no, no thanks, all sorts of things. And finally, after six months, she got her first client who said, yes, you can list my house, right? So um, can you imagine being told no over and over again every single day for six months before finally somebody says, yes, I would like you to help me sell my house. And then, you know, big, a big payday comes because finally the re you get the reward of the sale. So her experience and her telling me that Annie, everything's okay. It's okay to be rejected. It made me feel a lot better and it encouraged me to keep going because if I wasn't emotionally in the right state of mind, I probably would have quit. A lot of life is simply emotional management. If you can manage your emotions, then you can really set your mind to doing anything because I feel like anything that we want to do, especially if we feel like we have limiting beliefs related to it, we, we we feel that emotion in our body and then we believe that this emotion that we feel is so real that we cannot move forward and do the things that we want to do. Like for example, a lot of the things that I I do, you guys might feel like I'm so confident, but actually it's courage. This whole time, I'm not that confident. You know, maybe I can sit down here and, and speak but it's not confidence. I'm telling you a lot of the things that I want to do, it's been just courage. Confidence comes after you have done something over and over and over again, 
you can do it instinctively. It's second nature to you to the point where if you are asked to do it on command, you can produce those results on command. Like for example, you see me playing the piano. I'm not confident at piano at all. I'm, I'm probably, I'm over 750 hours in at this point. There's no confidence there. If you ask me to sit down and play a piece, I have no confidence whatsoever. I cannot play the piece for you. I'm sorry, right? Um, what I have is I have courage. So I have basically learned to feel the fear and just ignore it anyway. Just do it anyway, right? Like every time I want to do something, this is what I feel physically in my body. I feel like my my neck gets tense, tight, especially the back of my neck. I hold a lot of tension there, shoulders. And then my chest is just like, there's this heavy feeling on my chest. And then it, it goes like, my heart goes like, duh, 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 duh. it just speeds up my stomach. Uh, I get a lot of gas in my stomach. So basically, whenever I want to do something that I'm scared of doing, I feel all of these sensations in my body. And then I'm just like, okay, body, I understand you feel this, these sensations, but we're just going to do it anyway. We're just going to do it anyway. It's okay. Like, I, I, I've i never made... um. I'm just about to start making the uh, sketches. Is it skits or sketch? I, I don't know what's the difference between skit or sketch. Somebody correct me here. Anyway, I want to start doing those skits for TikTok. And I've never done it before. I'll be very honest. I'm very scared. I don't know how it's going to turn out. Are people going to laugh? Are they going to think I'm entertaining? I don't really know. <laughs> and um, maybe I'm going to make a total fool out of myself. But I I'm okay, right? But I have no confidence whatsoever. It's, it's simply courage. I just have to do it, right? I'll be very honest. I'm very nervous. Very, very nervous. <laughs> I've never done acting before. I took a, a six-week acting class back in October. I couldn't finish a class. I went to two classes and then I stopped. I, I wish I had what it took to, to keep going, but after two classes, I dropped the class. I was like, I can't keep going back. <laughs> so I, I, I can't always, you know, I'm not always successful at everything I do. I didn't finish a class. I dropped it. So I, I wasted my money on that class since I didn't finish it. Um, anyway, yeah, so I think accountability is really important because you have to learn emotional management. If, if you have somebody to keep you steady, keep you grounded every week in, in doing the things that you want to do, you're going to have a lot of success. So get an accountability for your job search. Um, pick a friend, pick a family member, just pick someone you can trust who you can call every week. Uh, to just check in and let them know what you're doing. And um, maybe they can give you advice. Maybe they can tell you things that they see from their outside perspective. Sometimes you just need to see things from a different perspective um, for everything to shift. It's a, it's a really subtle shift if you're looking for results, but sometimes that's all you need. Anyway, I really wanted to talk about imposter syndrome today because... What I really want to do is help you guys, especially if you're very smart and capable, um, really step more into your power. I feel like there's a lot of people out there so smart, but they haven't stepped into their power and they lack confidence in themselves, especially in the workplace. So I'm going to talk about imposter syndrome. We're going to address imposter syndrome, you know, over several videos from different viewpoints, but this is one. So I have imposter syndrome. There's no doubt about it. It wasn't until actually probably around last summer when I looked at it in the eye. I, look, I looked at imposter syndrome in the eye and I just wanted to, I punched it in the face basically. I'm so sick of having imposter syndrome. And um, I finally, I think I overcame it and I have a lot more confidence now. So what was one of the things that happened? I realized that this elusive, everybody else is better than me. Everybody else is smarter than me. Everybody else is more capable. Everybody else is more qualified. Everyone else is more confident. Everyone else has more friends. This elusive, like everyone else that we create in our head, this uh, mental model of this everyone else doesn't actually exist. And then I also realized that especially um, 
when it comes to making money and getting more work opportunity, actually, not everyone wants work opportunity. I'll give you an example. So two years ago, um, the guy who was doing the snow plow, snow removal for our condo association, he didn't want to do it anymore. He retired. I said, okay. So I called 13 snow removal companies in our area. I basically called every single one of them, every single snow removal. And there was 13 of them that served our area to ask for a quote. All I wanted was a quote. I'm not asking for very much. I just want a price. How much is it for the season, right? And guess how many called me back? You can take a guess. The answer is three. Yeah. Three out of 13 snow removal companies called me back and gave me a quote. Now you might be thinking, oh, Annie, this is, these are contractors. Contractors always like this. They're flaky. But that hasn't been my experience. People don't actually always want work. There are things that are more important to people than work. For me, especially, well, work is very important. So of course, and I love to make more money, but I cannot, just because I like things this way, I like life as like being like this. I like to make more money. I cannot portray that on everyone else and assume that everyone else wants to make more money. Everyone else wants to have a great career. Everyone else wants more work opportunity. You cannot project that on other people. People are different. People come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, blends. It's like a, a big salad bowl, basically, you know, all everything different, right? And so it, it, it goes beyond just a snow removal company because last year, um, a very old friend of mine, she's in her late 70s. She called me up and she said, I need a bookkeeper for my rental property. She owns a lot of rental properties in Parksville, Brooklyn. And she's like, I just can't do it anymore. I can't do my own bookkeeping. I'm getting too old. My body hurts. Can you help me find a local bookkeeping company in Fort Lauderdale? Uh, I was like, but I don't know any bookkeeping companies in Fort Lauderdale. I'm not based in Fort Lauderdale. And then she was like, well, can you help help me? Help me find, how do I find someone qualified? And I was like, okay, let me see what I can do. So you know what I did? I made a list of every single bookkeeping service uh, company out there in Fort Lauderdale, local to her, local to her, so that they can do the bookkeeping and and uh, meet her in person if she needs to, because she's old. I mean, you can't expect her to get on a Zoom call. It's, it's a real struggle for her. She needs to meet someone in person. I made a list of 50. Took a long time to compile that list of 50. And then I emailed every single one of those companies within a one hour period because I wanted to see who would email back. I, I wanted to time them based on their responsiveness because if they're really responsive, then that's a really good first impression. I, I judge people on that, okay? You know how many companies out of 50 responded back to give us a quote? This lady literally is ready to open her wallet. I want to pay someone. I have this problem. I'm willing to throw money at this problem. Can somebody just take my money and solve my problem? Please. You know, she's willing to pay. Okay, she's wealthy. She's a wealthy lady. And um, only five companies emailed back. Only five companies emailed back to give a quote. And I don't even think so because I, like 40, so 45 of them totally ignored my email, just totally ignored it. Um, five emailed back, but really only three of them gave a quote quote, like we actually got on a Zoom call to discuss what her needs would be to give us an estimate, like what is the scope of work and everything. Only three of them actually gave a consult to tell us what the price is going to be. The other two just said, we're so busy, we're not taking on new clients. At least they had the courtesy to say, yeah, I don't think we're going to be a good fit, you know, uh, or like we're just so busy, we can't take on new clients. But the other 45 just didn't even have the courtesy to respond. So this 
guys is your everyone else is so much better than me guys they're not even answering their phone calls they're not even answering their emails i don't understand what's up with people like and and then I came to realize that this is the reason why I'm given opportunity is because I will answer the text. I will answer the call. I'll answer your email. You know, you comment. I, I read your comments. Sometimes I, I'll leave a reply. Can't reply to every comment, but I try. I, I at least try to respond, right? Your competition can't even respond. So um, that's why I I think if you think about it like this, it will help you with your imposter syndrome because your competition isn't even getting back to people this this is like countless it goes beyond just that i mean what was it was there a time yeah last year so a part of my balcony fell one of the beams in my balcony fell the balcony is like 50 years old i needed a brand new balcony i had to this is just like it was not an optional uh, renovation I needed a brand new balcony installed I called so many construction companies contractors to just come out and take a look at my balcony can you please give me a quote and I think only three of them ended up coming out of course one of the three ends up getting my money but the other you know like just the fact that they didn't answer my call to give me a quote, they lost out on the potential to make money. So if you think about it in this way, like most of the population, they go through life just like, I don't know, very lackadaisical, just ignoring communication from other people. People just ignore you, even though you have a wallet, you're ready to throw money at this problem. I'm willing to pay somebody to just solve this damn problem for me. And it just seems like people don't care. They're not interested in earning the money. So if you have even just a little bit more drive, a little bit more ambition than the next guy, I guarantee you, you're, you're gonna be the one that gets the phone call for the interview, and then you're gonna be the one that gets the job. The bar has been set that low. Your competition can't even answer the phone, all right? So forget about having imposter syndrome because if you have even just like the good intention to answer people's emails, I guarantee you, you will do well. That's how low the bar has been set these days. I think I have more stories to share, but this video is getting a bit long. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, happy birthday to me. I think maybe tomorrow though, I don't want to co continue this conversation. Maybe I'll talk about like being in your 20s and stop having such high expectations for what your 20s should look like. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, censorship is a really big problem these days on the internet. If you want to get in touch with me, I, I want to stay in touch with you because most likely because of the things that I will say, the things that I will do, I will get uh, censored, shadow banned, probably even entirely uh, deplatformed. So the best way is to really have a direct contact with me and not with the platform. So my phone number my personal cell phone number is 806-544-2929. Download the Signal app because the messages are end-to-end -end encrypted. And then just send me a text message. Again, my phone number is 806-544-2929. Hope to get in touch. Leave any comments with any like questions you have. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.